Uh, this is the reopening of the regular meeting of the select board for June 23rd, uh, 2020 that was recessed uh, or adjourned until 4 p.m. today. This meeting is all meetings is being uh, held remotely and we're using the Zoom uh, meeting platform, uh, which is uh, allowing us to record this meeting. A quorum of the board is participating from their respective remote uh, hide hideouts. So uh, with that, uh, we're continuing this meeting, uh, so we don't have public comment, but uh, as we uh, talk about uh, issues, people who want to uh, make a public comment um, within limit, within reason, uh, meaning time reason, um, should raise their hand in the, um, in, in the Zoom uh, platform, and we'll try to accommodate as many as possible. Um, we, we have a, a hard stop, as, uh, actually before seven o'clock, I'd say 6.30, because uh, last night people had difficulty getting into the town meeting. So I wanna make sure that we're available or able to um, begin that process before seven o'clock. So um, let's go back to the uh, uh, police budget, uh, uh, the budget uh, and uh, the uh, police um, uh, uh, budget items. The, the, what's on the floor is a motion that uh, I think was initiated by John uh, to uh, cut the police budget by $166,066 and uh, allocate that money to um, uh, various uh, other uh, programs, uh, including public health, uh, the Diversity Commission, uh, Office of Diversity, uh, Inclusion, and Community Relations, Veterans Council, and Council on Aging. Um, so that's what's on the table. Uh, does anyone want to reconsider that? So maybe this is more of a process question. There are, I think, at least five proposals being floated at town meeting regarding right. this issue. So um, I guess- like me to provide a summary of where we are? Um, yes. We kind of did please. that at the end of the day. That yesterday. would be very helpful. Okay. Or, uh, just give me a minute. Um, so we have uh, currently, the select board has uh, a motion that they made found in supplement one. Uh, the advisory committee also has a motion in supplement one. So the select board uh, took John's position on the uh, amendment to the police budget and restoration of several human service departments uh, from the town administrator's recommendation. The advisory committee um, took the town administrator's recommendation and reduced the police department by 66, 440, and added that to the DICR for community engagement position. Then we have, um, a number of amendments on top of that, we have uh, the Gordon Rosenthal Amendment, which we started to talk about yesterday, the Bastian Akineshe motion, which um, we will be taking up later on this evening, uh, the Brown Bastian motion, uh, which reduces the police department budget by 2,129,000, uh, that then subsequently got amended to 2,115,000. Uh, that can be found on uh, Article 8, Supplement Number 6. Uh, and then we have the Ananian Fernandez motion, which was submitted under Article 5 and then got amended. I'm not Article 5, Supplement 5. And then got amended as the Ananian O'Neill revised motion, which you can find in Supplement Number 7 for 1,198,560. Uh, and then today, um, Jane Gilman filed a motion working off the advisory committee supplemental motion um, that essentially reduces the police department budget $100,000 from the town administrator's recommend recommendation and uh, adds that money to the select board's budget in order to uh, provide some funding for the task force to uh, start their work. And I know yesterday we were talking about um, additional motions that I think the Gilman motion is kind of taking the place of some of the advisory committee um, earlier um, positions on, on where they thought they were going to uh, amend the budget. But um, they're also meeting at the same time as you. So um, needing to understand, hopefully, um, you know, I think Bernard may have talked to Mike Sandman today. And then if, if there's time, I'll try and jump into that meeting to see where they are. Okay. Well, so that's just, where we are. Just one clarifying question. The AC uh, proposal, I thought was 1.2 million right um, there, taken out 
yeah, that, that, that was their, their proposal last night. Um, that apparently they're reconsidering that and looking at this uh, Jane Gilman uh, proposal, which go, basically goes back to their original uh, position in terms of the amount taken out of the uh, police department. Okay. Or, uh, rough, close to it, at any rate. Okay, so if we look at uh, our motion, our, the- uh, Motion on the table from the select board. Yeah, that's on uh, uh, in supplement number one. Right. Okay. Page one of the uh, of article eight. Well, I think you have to go to the tables to see the amount, right, Melissa? Yes. Huh? Yes. So that's line item number, number 10? ten. Yep. Okay. So seventeen so, million three hundred and thirty-seven. Pardon me. Seventeen million three hundred and thirty-seven. Right, and okay, and and so we have a cut of eight hundred and twenty-two thousand thirty-nine dollars, right? Oh, that's a change from fiscal year twenty. Right, but that doesn't include the one sixty-six that that we uh, voted. That's in that number. The original, oh, the number. base number was seventeen million five hundred and three thousand sixty-six. Okay. Yeah, okay, that's what I was confused about. I thought maybe it included it. So that that's that's the motion we have on the table, and but the question is. Current position, yes. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So we and can it just. Included, it included the th this motion. Includes the funding of the DICR position? No, it does not. You didn't have that in front of you at the time you were making this motion. Okay. Essentially, essentially, I think what you did is you uh, you restored um, as much of the the cuts the cuts that I had made out of the budget uh, in the social service agencies, but did not add any new positions. So I think that what's changed from from my understanding is. Uh, there is a desire to uh, allocate some money for the task force activities uh, when you when the select board appoints it. And I think there's a desire to rather create this position in the DICR rather than just fill in, uh, you know, supplies and other areas where we cut. And, uh, you know, I support both of those for sure. Okay. Well, in order to add money for the task force, uh, which someone is uh, suggesting we would have to recon would we have to reconsider this motion or just reallocate? So you you've reconsidered the non-departmental part. So I think you'd want to reopen the departmental piece of your motion to uh, attempt to align with the advisory committee. Well, we don't know what the advisory committees <laughs> do. That's the challenge. Maybe we should throw out the first ball. <laughs> Right? Yes, and then I can report that to them. They should be meeting shortly. Okay. okay. So why does Jane Gilman's uh, show a, a, a subtraction of the 66440 from DICR? Because her intent was only to fund the activities of the task force. And so I don't know if the advisory committee would add on top of that or keep it the way that it is. Okay. I see. What does the select board think? I have great reservations about defunding something related to diversity and inclusion. Why? Um, well, if we're going to defund anything, uh, that would not be top on my list. Yeah, the question though is what, what is it that we're taking out or what program are we taking out by defunding? Well, I'm not, I'm not suggesting that we do that. I just, I, I don't think that because there's no magic to D, DICR. Uh, in terms of um, you know um, not being subject to uh, review of their budget, having their um, budget reviewed. Could uh, I just could I just add that this is not um, a cut in existing services. This is an expansion request that the advisory committee has currently put in the in their motion. Yeah. Okay. So it's not really a defunding then. It's just a it's just a uh, a different way of looking at their budget. So the, the reductions that they provided the town administrator were in non-personnel 
And so those remain. And then the, um, the advisory committee added a position. And that's the community engagement position? Correct. Okay. So that's the 66440? Yes. Okay. Um, I was got um, a question for, oh, sorry, Nancy, you first. No, go ahead. Oh, this is a question for Mel. Um, so now I've seen two proposals that um, that seek to set aside money for the task force um, that that I, I'm I'm fairly certain now we're going to be creating after after town meeting. Um, and we don't quite know what that those monies would even be used for. Is there, if for some reason, um, one of either either of those motions that provide money for the task force don't pass? Um, the task force created, and we find that we 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 as a board do want to somehow spend some money on this. Is there access? Are there is there access to some kind of fund where we could we could spend money related to the task force? Yeah, the first yeah. one I can think of is a reserve fund, but I well, the, the town administrator also has a professional services account which funds consulting, so uh, we would be able to access that if we needed to. There's an option there. It's not a whole lot of money there. It's not. It's forty-five. I have a lot of demands on that for appraisal services and extra other professional services. But I'd say the reserve fund is probably the most uh, logical place. Okay. It, um, I, I wanted to just um, add a couple of uh, bits of information here. The, the advisory committee's um, specific um, ad back uh, as of uh, a week ago was the uh, Office of Diversity, Inclusion, and Community Relations Engagement Special Specialist, as mandated by town meeting. So it had the virtues, it had two uh, virtues in particular. One, that it addressed something that had been mandated by town meeting. And two, that what it addressed was an engagement specialist. And I have a feeling that the thrust of the arguments that some of us will be making uh, that we not go with the Brown Amendment and we not go the, with the Ananian Amendment is that they failed the test of engagement. And so I think for us to support engagement is a good thing. And for us to support something that had been uh, mandated by town meeting is a good thing. So that's, you know, um, <laughs> two, two, two points in favor of uh, going with the 66,440. Uh, and then there is the question of, do we want to go with 50 or 100 uh, to go to the task force? I, I think that's also an engagement plus. Um, and then the only remaining question is, do we want to put any additional money in for some of the um, not very expensive um, social service items that Mel had identified in his budget memo? Um, and of, of those, I will express uh, a personal favorite, which would be to restore some money to the Council on Aging um, and perhaps to restore some money to veterans as well. So John, what are you proposing in terms of, a, in terms of the dollars? Uh, I, I can be quite specific about the Council on Aging because I had communications um, with uh, Ruth Ann Dobeck on this. Uh, and so the amount uh, would be 94,037. I can, by the way, I'll forward this to all of you in an email. Um, so the amount would be 94,037 uh, and the constituent amounts <coughs> would be um, 47,132 of that is for this social worker program they have that's wonderful that involves senior citizens as part-time paid social workers working with other senior citizens. So it has this wonderful sort of uh, effect of both serving senior citizens plus also providing income to senior citizens. Then uh, th this is the, uh, the item we all are familiar with, the custodial item, 17,981, which is needed more than ever because of COVID. Um, and also a staff assistant, uh, 13,685. The uh, BETS, which is the transportation uh, uh, function that they do, um, the BETS coordinator is 9,322. They have a community aid that is in for 5,000 and they have supplies at 970. Okay. I'm gonna forward all of this to you right now. Okay, so, okay. so what are you suggesting that uh, 
what is your offer? First of all, let me ask, what about the public health uh, money? Why are you not including that? Well, I didn't include that because um, Nell's list included some, some money for public health, but there wasn't enough in, when you take 20% of overtime, which was kind of the number we started with, um, you end up with sort of an odd, it doesn't really match what's, the, what's left for public health doesn't match what, what we would have had to fund in public health. Uh, and so, you know- We're, it, we're starting with a clean better. slate here. Hmm? We're starting with a clean slate here. So, and it's not, I don't think we should see ourselves as limited to the overtime budget. Uh, I, I understand totally. And Melissa can uh, validate this. I think it is for a vehicle. Yes, yeah, so because there wasn't enough to restore the vehicle fully, we added the uh, total to services. So it hadn't um, been identified in terms of what the services uh, would be expanding by. So the their reduction, the health department reduction was a vehicle. Okay, so, um, okay, we, we, we need um, a motion to reconsider. I, I move uh, a reconsideration of uh, our original uh, motion. Um, and then we can talk about you know, what we want to put in its place. Um, uh, I'll, move re yeah. I'll move reconsideration. Okay. Uh, all in favor, Ms. Heller? Aye. Ms. H uh, Hamilton? Aye. Uh, Mr. Fernandez? I voted no, so I don't know that I can vote on a reconsideration motion. You tell me. Um, 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 I think you can vote on the yeah. reconsideration. I just can't move it. Right, okay. you can't move. You can vote because you may want to vote uh, or push for your, right, um, right. you know, original. Uh, All right, we're going to do it anyway, so I'll say aye, yes. Let's yeah. Go. <laughs> um, who else? Oh, John. <laughs> aye. aye. All right, chair votes aye. Okay, so now now we we're, we're reconsidering. What are we proposing? Uh, I would like to propose that uh, we um, we go with uh, the original. Um, uh, motion plus adding uh, fifty thousand dollars to the uh, task force. So let's discuss that, unless someone wants to throw out another motion. Um, well, and and that, by the way, is, is putting us um, on the side of those who don't want to make massive wax to the police department. Uh, we'll, we'll take that. We'll have to take the uh, firestorm that uh, will result from that decision. But um, you know, I think we need to do what's right. I don't want to make massive wax until I understand what those massive wax uh, entail, and uh, then I may not want them at all. I, I you know, I, but I, I need to understand what it is that we're whacking. Uh, but I, I would say that it seems to me that that it might be difficult to spend a hundred thousand dollars before November on, in the task force. I'm, that, I'm suggesting fifty. I know. So I'm I'm just saying that we can. We could, you know, if, if it's, it's not enough, we could add in November. Um, so, you know, I think on that theory, we should stick to 50 now. And then, um, you know, uh, I have, I, I would support the, the Council on Aging restorations. I think they're um, definitely worth it. Um, and I don't know where that leaves us. I'm not, I, you know, <laughs> so there's so many moving parts here. Yeah, my, my idea was to make it really simple and uh, take John's original motion and just add 50,000 um, without having to look at, you know, whether the vehicle is, is appropriate, whether, you know, the details of those. Um, at, at some point, I mean, the, <laughs> the chief is here. Um, I think that, you know, he was, uh, talking last time and um, I think we have an obligation to hear him out in terms I would of like to be heard before that okay. happens. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can ahead. I go now? Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I have serious misgivings about redirecting money into specific social services. Um, it just, it feels like a popularity contest right now. And my my misgivings, I, I'm willing to defund some of the police budget and only the police budget and set some money aside for the task force, but to start picking and choosing social services one over the other, because quite frankly, I would 
advocate for more services for our transportation department. Um, I just, it, it's swinging the pendulum in the other direction where the five of us right now are picking and choosing which services get restored without really any process. And that's the problem I had with defunding the police department in the first place. I think it needs to go through a rigorous process, which starts with the task force. Right, okay. So you would say- and, and a process which includes a lot of community engagement. I haven't seen a whole lot of community engagement in the past two weeks. I mean, we have you know some people who are on one side of the issue uh, sending us emails and all of a sudden we're getting people on the other side are finding out about it and writing us and saying, no, we don't want you to do that. So, you know, but that's, that's weak community engagement in my view. Well, that, that might be an argument to vote against the motion that you voted for last time, Nancy, was in favor of John's motion that, that, didn't, have the, that didn't have the process that Heather's talking about. I, would I just, agree I would, it doesn't have the process, but I uh, also agree that we need, you know, to uh, begin the task force work. And I, you know, we have, that money needs to come from someplace. And um, so, you know, I don't have so much of a problem. I mean, I, I, Heather's right. It's, it, it's a popularity contest and picking and choosing. On the other yeah. hand, I think, you know, um, the, uh, the Council on Aging issues are very specific in terms of providing services for seniors. Um, and the things that we have that we're going to lose as a result of this budget, if I understand correctly. I'll just, I'll just say, just building on Heather's comment, if, if we were to separate these two out, I would support the 50K for the task force, but I'll continue to not support um, the other, the other um, vote that we took last time. And, and I will be the first to um, admit that uh, Heather is right. You know, no, like, no doubt about that. <laughs> I, I don't know how I don't know how else to say it, and, and uh, I confess, you know, that uh, this is exactly what is wrong in my view. With um, it, it's it's part of what's wrong with, with the Brown Amendment uh, and the Anadian Amendment um, is that I, I attempted um, to do the kind of work that I think anyone needs to do if they are going to propose taking money out of a police department budget and putting it into other, for other purposes, into other departments for other purposes. And uh, I, I, I could only scratch the surface, but even at that, I got into some details, you know, with, uh, with Ruth Ann Dobeck from the, the uh, Council on Aging, and I spent time on the phone with Bill McGordy from the Veterans Department. And I e emailed uh, to Swanee Jett from the Health Department. And uh, just figuring out what they need is complicated because although they were in Mel's budget memo as you know, having taken some cuts, I quickly found out that they have some fallback for some of that you know, that they might actually be able to cover some of what was cut from grants. So did I really want to give them the money if maybe they had a fallback that would allow them to cover it from a grant? Not really, but, but we kind of, a game got started of, you know, a proposal to do a, uh, uh, you know, in, in for social justice reasons, which I, which I totally agree with and sympathize with, a game got started of let's take a, bunch of money from the police department and um, find ways to sort of um, shower it on social services, but none of the work was done to really rationalize that pro process. And I wanna see that process rationalized, which I think can be done through the task force. Um, and, and I would gladly defer to Heather's argument on this, that we should just appropriate the money for DICR or engagement and some money for the task force, which I assume also would help with engagement. I'll, I'll just say, you know, substituting our own judgment for a process leads you down a road that sometimes you can't recover from. Can, um, okay. can I get a sense of what others think about the amount of 50K for the task force? Others on the board have done a lot more um, sort of this kind of uh, work 
task force committee work, uh, is that sufficient? Should we be looking at a, at a larger number? I, I'm, I'm yeah. literally just asking. My, my, my thinking, you know, for whatever it's worth, is that uh, we don't know what it takes. Uh, but we do know that we do need something in order to enable this task force to get off the ground and 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 do its work in in a um, in a, a serious way. Um, can't do it on the basis of uh, you know good ideas and and um, good intentions. Uh, so fifty thousand dollars between now and and November when we could make changes seems to me a good good start. I, mean, I can't imagine you. I mean, can't I can't imagine that you would need more than that. But um, you know, uh, for this for the next four months or whatever it is, um, so yeah, I, I think that's why I think fifty thousand dollars is 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 appropriate. Uh, but again, it's it's out of the air. In terms of the other issue, uh, social services, yes, this is a political process, and political processes entail uh, horse trading, and that's what we're basically doing. Um, but I but I think I agree with Heather that uh, maybe you know this should just be a, a, a clean um, uh, motion that uh, gives money to DICR because you know that's the position that uh, uh, has already been mandated by town meeting and for other reasons, as well as uh, for the task force. But maybe the others, well, important and good. And of course, the aging community is very, very powerful community, and some of us are in it. Um, nonetheless, I think that uh, you know maybe that the majority sort of us. Are yes, the majority. <laughs> We lost Ben. We lost you. You, you youngies <laughs> lost your majority. <laughs> Just to note, Ben looks older than me, but I'm actually older than him. <laughs> okay, but you're not old enough. <laughs> so the only thing that I can say at this point is that I, I think it's absolutely necessary what the task force is going to do, and I will be as supportive with my votes. Uh, on what they say that they need as possible. Yeah. So when they come to us and say, we want to do this or we need money for this, I will absolutely try to um, to get anything yeah. that they say that they yeah. need. Are you and, and saying we shouldn't even fund the 50,000 now? That is not what I'm saying. I, I think okay. we need skin in the game. Yeah, okay. okay. And, and by the way, Mel said that uh, you know there is money that could be uh, from this professional services account or a reserve fund transfer. If push comes to shove, but I don't you know think that before November, push is going to come to shove. Um, so uh, where are we in terms of uh, what we'd like to uh, uh, do in in lieu of, or instead of uh, what we did uh, uh, last time with our motion? Uh, we're we're at uh, now. I've lost the. Email. I thought you proposed a motion, Bernard. It sounds like Heather made a motion. Uh, let me let me know if this is correct, Heather. You'd okay. like to, you'd like to work off the advisory committee's motion, which had the uh, additional position in the DICR, and then you would like to add uh, fifty thousand dollars to the police uh, to the uh, select board's office for professional services uh, associated with supporting the task force. And that Correct. fifty thousand would come from uh, additional reduction of the police budget. So the total reduction from what the town administrator originally recommended would be one hundred and sixteen thousand four hundred and forty. Correct. And that Correct. that doesn't say anything about the one point two setting aside for contingency fund. Right. Oh, right. right. Okay. Okay. So um, I mean, I'll move it, but uh, does someone else want to move that? I, I guess I I could move it. Okay. Uh, Second. Motion, Pardon me. It's Heather's motion. I think she should yeah, move it. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you know, uh, I think there are a couple of people who have their hands raised. Uh, Will Walker and Marty Rosenthal. Uh, should we uh, listen to their comments uh, before yes. we vote? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Devin, could you let uh, Mr. Walker um, make his presentation? Will, you have been promoted to a panelist and you should be able to unmute yourself. Uh, thank you. Uh, good evening, Select Board. Uh, my name is Will Walker, police officer here at Brooklyn Police Department for about six years. Forgive me, public speaking isn't, uh, I'm better ex expressing myself through writing as many of you uh, may now know than I am at public speaking, but I'll do my best here. Uh, last night, I sent a letter to the town 
uh, meeting members in regards to the budget cuts being proposed. And I've received many emails and correspondence in response to this letter, some in support of the police department and some in support of the budget cuts. I've even received replies from members of this select board. I welcome this spirited debate and I believe it is this civil discussion that can and will lead to actual change in our community. I believe these budget cuts as proposed will drastically alter the ability of the Brooklyn Police Department to protect and serve the community. Now more than ever, we as a department need to be present mentally and emotionally to help create a positive change in our town and for the people we serve. America is really beginning to truly address some of its deepest, ugliest wounds and the men and women of the Brookline Police Department are more than capable and committed to being the champion for that change. I grew up in Phillips Corner, Dorchester, Massachusetts, pretty impoverished neighborhood. I have firsthand experiences with both law enforcement and being a victim of violent crimes. Furthermore, as a black man, I have had firsthand experiences with racial injustices growing up as an adult and family members of mine has had uh, unfortunate encounters with racial injustice. Unfortunately, my story is not unique. The Brookline Police Department is full of officers from different backgrounds with different life experiences. Coupled with the progressive and dedicated leader in Chief Lipson, our little melting pot here at 350 Washington Street has provided us with the unique ability to provide an unheard of level of service to the residents of Brookline. Some of Boston's highest crime rates surround Brookline on three sides, yet our crime rate within our borders is extraordinarily low. And I believe this is no accident. I think it's a direct reflection of the work the Brookline Police Department does with, it, with utmost professionalism. Our police department employs 129 officers. We responded to 67,849 calls for service in 2019. In addition to the countless other general interactions we have with the public every day, from those interactions and those calls for service, there were six, six complaints filed against our officers. Of those complaints, one was for excessive force and one was for racial profiling. Now, I'm no expert on statistics, but those six complaints versus 67,000 calls for service and countless interactions just speaks to the professionalism that we day in and day out um, show here in Brooklyn Police Department. Our department is by and large better equipped to respond to the problems of our community here in Brooklyn. The drastic cutting of the police department budget and attempt to right size the department is misguided. As police commissioner and select board member Raul Fernandez pointed out to me in an email exchange we had today, we can reduce the budget simply through retirements and attrition and leaving 10 vacant officer positions vacant. The extreme measures proposed at town meeting only serve to further marginalize those in the Brooklyn community that need our help the most. Those drastic cuts will directly affect minority officers here at Brooklyn Police Department. Over the past 10 years, the Brooklyn Police Department has made a, a concerted effort to to reach out and recruit minority officers to serve and better represent the, the community as a whole. Those officers all got on within the last 10 years and these drastic budget cuts will directly affect those officers in losing their jobs and being able to provide for their families. Again, this is by no means to suggest that we as a department do not need to evolve to how we serve our community. The Brookline Police Department responded to 608 calls for suspicious persons last year, 608. I think that as a department, dispatchers included, we can easily reevaluate how we approach a call for a subject that an anonymous, anonymous source deems out of place. We need to reevaluate re why and how we interact with the public at the behest of someone else for a matter that ultimately is not a police matter. I'm confident that we can rise to this challenge. I'm confident that the well-educated members of the select board, the town meeting members, and the residents of Brookline will not fall victim to hysteria and punish their police department by approving such drastic budget cuts for actions of officers some 1,400 miles away. I'm confident that you will all work with us to address our issues here in okay. Brooklyn. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we have uh, a few other uh, comments. Um, uh, how about Mr. Rosenthal? Uh, um, Marty? He's just been promoted to a panelist, so it takes a minute for the audio to connect. So let's try to uh, keep it to three minutes. I have the timer going. Okay. Mm -hmm. Was Mr. Walker under three minutes? He was just over 15 okay. seconds. Ready? Okay. Yes. All right, it's not going to be three minutes. I'm mostly concerned about the procedural issue with the moderator today about 
the Alston case, the conditions of appropriation, that one and, and mine and Neil's, I just think it's a travesty to have town meeting dealing with those without the reports by you people and the advisory committee, which was a decision last night, my point of order at the very beginning. And I hope that you people will weigh in on that because it's just really wrong for the town meeting and it's unfair to the petitioners. I wasn't, I might have to skip your meeting on our amendment. Okay, thank I'm you. Working on my speeches, that's okay. it. Thank you, Martin. Okay, um, I see uh, Mr. Chubo Belly who actually has a lawsuit against the town with respect to the police department, but um, uh, what do board members think? Should we uh, take his comment? Bernard, I was just promoting people in the order that I saw them raise their hand, so Scott was next. Oh, I, he's not on my list, I see. Okay. Uh, to, to your comment, anyone who wants to speak, I think this board owes it to them to hear them out. Okay, I think we also owe it to uh, the board to identify who, the, who it is. Um, so, okay, uh, you said Scott and Anian? Yes, Scott, you've been promoted to a panelist. If you'd like to give a comment, so your hand raised. Right. Thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll be quick. I don't want to take up more of your time because you guys have heard from me before. Um, thank you to the select board, Scott and Anian, town meeting member, Precinct 10. Um, I'd like to um, just start by saying it's certainly not my intention to be punitive to the police department in any way. I don't think we're we're punishing them for doing a bad job. In fact, um, I think uh, most of this problem is structural, is that they're doing a very good job at uh, jobs that perhaps they shouldn't be doing. Um, there's no reason you need to carry a gun to be an animal control officer, perhaps. Um, even traffic enforcement in large measure can be done by other, other groups. And trimming the police budget is not um, going to affect uh, a la the lasting change we need. I, I endorse the, uh, the task force, as I said before. Um, this is just a, 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 an attempt to put a line in the sand and restore us not even to where we were in fiscal year 18 um, uh, to say that the police department shouldn't keep growing but instead should should basically hold still and we should uh, figure out what to do um, in the longer term with the, the resources that we're devoting to it the, the department is the largest uh, department or yeah the largest department in the town and so even relatively modest uh, changes to the budget and as we've seen find a huge number of other projects around town um, I understand that that uh, you're uncomfortable with with making divisions, but by our budgets are appropriations rather, but budgets are expressions of priorities, and it's been a long time that housing and the schools, um, and even community engagement has been neglected in this town. Um, so uh, those were not uh, numbers I pulled out of a hat. They were a, a long result of a, a great deal of effort and a large amount of um, collaboration with people. Um, uh, you know the public process that that. Um, that you're looking for it perhaps did not include uh, members of this, uh, all the members of the select board, but it certainly did include a large number of people, including department heads. Um, so that, that's all I want to say. Um, I, uh, I, I wish the select board were leading on this issue. Um, uh, I uh, appreciate though that you're uh, concerned with the tax force in the longer term, and I hope uh, uh, that everyone will take a, undertake a commitment like Heather's to fully um, implement the recommendations and to pay careful attention to who is on um, uh, the task force. It, it will be easy, especially if uh, the advisory, the current advisory committee motion goes forward, um, which gives that task force a, a huge amount of money to appropriate. It will be easy to, um, uh, uh, to, to bias the results of the task force um, by their responsibility to appropriate large amounts of money uh, within town. So uh, I hope that the task force can be neutral and biased and, and deliver re recommendations that you will pay attention to. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. O'Bailey, I guess is next, uh, Devin. Yes. Hi, can you guys hear me? Yes. yes very well. Hi, uh, so I thank you for letting me have an opportunity to speak to you guys. My name is Chubo Belli and I live in Precinct 1. I'm calling I'm calling on you to use your power as the select board to divest from police spending in the town's budget and use the money to fund Brookline schools and social services. Brookline needs a budget that prioritizes the well being of all Brookline residents and invests in our community, not one that rewards a department that has had four claims of racial discrimination filed against it in the last four years. 
Next year, Brookline will spend $17.7 million on policing while leaving many essential services underfunded. Given that Brookline has one and a half times as many police officers per 10,000 residents as Needham, Newton, and Lexington, it makes no sense that the town continues to prioritize police spending. At a time when people across the country are demanding creative solutions to policing, we should be looking for ways to invest in our community. I'm asking that you use your power to meaningfully defund the Brookline Police Department and allocate those funds to social workers in Brookline schools, low income housing improvement and domestic abuse prevention. Um, and even though I have a lawsuit, I just want you to know that um, I don't feel that I'm, I'm not looking for the police to be punished necessarily. I guess I'm just trying to join those voices who are demanding uh, real change and accountability. Um, and yeah, thank you for letting me talk. Okay, thank you. Uh, Deborah Brown is the next one, Devin, and, and that's uh, gonna be the last um, uh, com uh, comment we're gonna take. Hello, my name is Deborah Brown. I'm from Precinct One. And uh, I support the budget uh, amendments, uh, I guess my particular budget amendment, and I would encourage you to do the same. Uh, we did have put a great deal of thought into it. And, and I would like to remind the select board that I actually appeared like a broken record. I can't tell you how many times I, I showed up and I talked about the need for these op for these programs. I, I asked that they be put on the agenda and I got nowhere. So in terms of trying to encourage community in engagement, I certainly asked select board to do it. I asked the uh, select board and advisory committee to consider uh, creating a third prong to the uh, town school partnership to include a discussion of, of vulnerable populations and it went nowhere. And I sent many an email talking about just the uh, social service uh, issues or as we like, as you guys refer to them, random social services issues uh, that I discussed. Lastly, uh, many of the issues that we're talking about fit neatly in, into the uh, strategic priorities that, that the town has outlined as priorities uh, and affordable housing being one of the principal ones. When, when you look at the housing, uh, low-income housing in this town, um, some of it's dilapidated. And I expressly, repeatedly highlighted those needs and got no reaction, zero. And so as a result of that, that's how we got to this budget amendment. It wasn't haphazard, it wasn't random. It was, it was, it was very clear and it was very thoughtful. So the idea that it just was pulling a rabbit out of a hat and you know, pick your social service idea is, is, is not true. Why the police? Because you know that they, they have funds. Are we trying to cripple the police? I personally am not, but they, you know, they appear to have the resources. Is, will it cripple them? No. Will, they, 30 be, seconds. will they be able to do their job? Yes. Their mission is to serve and protect and I, I believe that it's a shame and it does a disservice to those young people to make them feel like they are in some way being attacked. And I wish that the leadership would not put them in that position because it does no one any good to have them feel that way. So thank you for your time. Bye. Thank you. Okay, so um, Heather, did you make that motion? I did. Okay, um, I'd like to get something to this uh, advisory committee and move on to the next thing that we have to deal with. Um, uh, Heather's made the motion. I think someone seconded it. Um, all in favor, Ms. Heller? I think she said aye. <laughs> aye. Okay. 
Sorry, Ms. I was muted. Ms. Hamilton? Aye. Ms. Fernandez? Aye. Uh, Mr. Van Skoyek? Aye. And Chair Vosai? Okay, um, next item is, uh, Melissa, what, what, are, what are we at next? The Austin Amendment? So the, now, oh, you ha now you have to, now that you have your motion in place, you should consider all the amendments that are in front of you. So you have the, um, the Rosenthal Amendment that was started yesterday. You have the um, Bastian Akinashe uh, Amendment, which is also in front of you. And then the Anadian and the Brown Amendment, you still need to take a position on those, whether, I mean, obviously you didn't incorporate it into your motion, um, but you should probably just have a definitive vote to um, either accept or reject it. Okay, why don't we have that vote, for those two votes first, the Bastian and the um, Anadian, I'm sorry, the Brown and Bastian and Anadian uh, police to funding uh, motions. Um, anyone like to uh, anyone like to move the uh, Brown Bastion motion? I'm happy to. Okay. Um, does it need a second? Let's vote anyway. <laughs> I don't think it needs a second. Um, all in favor, Ms. Heller? No. Um, Ms. Hamilton? No. Uh, Mr. Fernandez? Aye. Uh, Mr. Vanskoyak? No. And chair votes no. Um, the uh, next one is the Ananian uh, O'Neill uh, uh, motion. Happy uh, to move that too. Okay. Good. Um, all in favor, Ms. Heller? No. Uh, Ms. Hamilton? No. Uh, Ms. Uh, Mr. Uh, Fernandez? Aye. Uh, Mr. Vanskoyak? No. And chair votes no. Okay, now we're to the, um, so you have that for your record, uh, Melissa, okay? <laughs> or do you want to, uh, I'm sure that these other two amendments may take longer. Do you want me to jump off and uh, check in with the advisory committee? And, and if anything happens, you can send me a text and I'll, uh, I'll pop back in when I'm done with them. Right, okay. Well, what about the uh, Gilman uh, amendment? So they, the Gilman amendment, I believe Heather's kind of modified that with her motion. All right. But but the Gilman Amendment still still is out there. It's still yeah. out there, but I think that once you know the advisory committee hears what you've done, and then Jane hears what you've done, she may want to reconsider. But at this point, it's going to be filed unless I hear otherwise from her. Um, and so um, we'll have to deal with it one way or another, probably tomorrow. Thank you, Melissa. All right, I'll be back. Okay, so uh, next, uh, the Rosenthal-Gordon um, Amendment uh, regarding uh, riot gear. We started this discussion. Um, and Mr. Rosenthal, do you want to uh, sort of get us back on track with where we were when we uh, cut off last time? Devin, could you? Uh, Promoting him now. Run? Yeah. Hi, Marty, you've been promoted did to I miss a panelist. Any, did I miss any votes? Because I, I lost my bandwidth there. No. You're good. Okay. I'm going to put myself on uh, oh, so. video away. That helps. Great. All right, Marty, you've been promoted to a panelist and you're unmuted. Okay, everyone hear me? Yep. Yes. I, I'm not going to speak at length, partly because I'm scrambling to prepare two speeches that I didn't th think I'd have to make tonight. And I reiterate what I say before. I think this is a travesty, the town meeting to be dealing with this, and especially the Alston thing without written reports from you and advisory. And it's an insult to both you and advisory. All right, having said that, and hoping you'll weigh in on that, um, this is, in my mind, pretty simple in the sense that I do not think this hurts the police department. It's not obtrusive. It's, it's very flexible. It especially does not foreclose use of current equipment. I don't see the harm of reporting it later to the select board. Most instances, you folks will not have three people who want to have hearings. The list can be amended later. It could have been amended by today, but we haven't gotten any proposals to do so. So I think this is something that 
you folks should endorse as a step in reaction to every all the emotion that's going on. This would be a non-intrusive, non-harmful to the police, but a good step for you to take to uh, show that you took that one incident, which was not a huge headache. I mean, it, it was it was frightening and annoying, but it was not a big deal. But you could show that you take it seriously. That's it. Okay. Uh, Mr. Lipson, would you like to um, uh, speak to, to this uh, motion? I'm promoting him to a panelist now. I'm sorry, Chief Lipson. Uh, good evening again, everybody. Uh, I feel like we talked about this a little bit yesterday. Uh, just my general feelings on it uh, are that, um, one, I think it's a budget amendment that's attached to what should be really a select board policy. I have obviously, you know, we've the select board has created many policies to guide how we do things, how we procure things and how they're used. I think it fits into other niches there. Uh, I think the list of what is considered riot gear is woefully inaccurate. And I think in for that reason, this is type of flaw, uh, a flawed amendment. Uh, some of these things like we talked about yesterday simply are not riot gear. They're used for regular public safety purposes to help people in their times of need. And I think it's it's unnecessary to that extent. Uh, I, I don't agree with the petitioner that we should make an amendment knowing that the select board is gonna have to fix it within matter of a matter of weeks. Uh, it kinds of goes along with some of the reactionary responses we've been hearing at this town meeting, uh, which are let's do something. Uh, I, I still stick to the position that I think we should do things, reform things, but do them the right way. So Mr. Rosenthal, uh, the chief uh, raised uh, or made an interesting point and that is uh, maybe the select board should take it upon themselves to um, prepare a, uh, a policy uh, on this um, and, and, and address the issues that you're concerned with that way. I mean, we, we've, we've taken on the uh, task of doing a policy on chokeholds, the ban chokeholds, and, and we can do the same thing with this. I think it's not straightforward, but it wouldn't be terribly difficult to um, find where in the policy manual this would fit and, and make appropriate changes that address procurement issues and um, you know, you know, mainly procurement, but maybe other things too. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad you did the chokehold thing, although I have been pushing since 1987 that policy changes should be the subject of public hearings for police issues. So yeah, no, I think I think we're going to have a public hearing on that. I, I agree. Well, all right, but but the point is, the real question where, and I know he's the professional, but I've been around doing this stuff for 45 years. I do not think this uh, would hinder the police department at all especially for use of current equipment. And I think it would be a way to show the town meeting that you take these, these overall issues seriously enough to take this one baby step right now that can be corrected if it's a problem. Uh, I wish the chief or somebody had proposed some specific items that should be taken off the list because Neil and I have offered to agree to that for a couple of weeks, but I guess we don't have that. And especially if we proceed tonight, um, it's probably too late for that. So um, that's it. I mean, I just think you should do this thing right now and not put it off for study or for whatever you're talking about. Yeah. Well, we would do more study than town meeting is going to do. <laughs> well, but yeah, I get you. I have your point. Mark. Can I make a comment? Yes. Uh, in general, I, you know, don't want our police to have quote riot gear unquote. I mean, I, I, I you know, and and gear which is designed to harm people. Um, but some of the things on this list are defensive. In other words, protecting police and they're going into a serious situation. And I'm thinking, you know, I, I haven't gotten over the fact that John Salvi in 1994, you know, shot up two different. Um, uh, Planned Parenthood uh, uh, centers killing two people and injuring, I think, five or six others pretty seriously. He was on a shooting rampage. I would never want to send police in there without bulletproof vests and things that could 
um, protect them from his rage as you know and his his shooting spree. So I I think that's an important distinction, and I I think here there are some things chest protectors. I mean, those are to protect the police officers who may be engaged in something like the John Salvi situation. I don't know if any of you were, I'm sure John Vinskoyak was, but I'm not sure the others of you were in Brookline at that time, but uh, you can certainly read about it. Uh, but um, he, you know, he, was in, he went to two different Planned Parenthood clinics and uh, uh, went on a shooting spree. So uh, we have to recognize that that kind of thing happens. Brookline is not immune from that. And what are we going to do to protect our officers who are going into those situations? Um, so I would want to, uh, to look at this more closely and understand, uh, have public hearings, understand what it is we're, we're banning. I think it, I don't like the idea of, um, taking away chest protectors and I don't know what body armor is, but I'm assuming it's bullet, bulletproof vests. I don't want to take that away. Uh, the other things, I certainly don't want to have, you know, thermal in dogs and assault weapons and et cetera. You know, and I'm, I'm not, I don't want heavy riot gear, but I do want our officers to be protected in case they have to encounter a situation and, and be in a situation like they had to be with John Salvin. Yeah. In, any other comments? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I don't, I don't read this as, as um, we talked about this yesterday, but I don't read this as impacting like so-called hot situations where, you know, decisions need to be made on the fly in order to protect and preserve life. I don't, I don't, I don't read this as that at all. With that said, um, you know, for the chief, I'm wondering, would you be willing to work with the board? There are two things I think that, that I think need to get addressed in addition to others, but, but in, in this regard, one is the idea that before the deployment of um, crowd control officers or, or colloquially known as, as riot police, you know, would you be supportive of working with the board on a policy that would include a conversation with the board or even, even just the chair or, or, the, or the chair's designee before the next kind of thing happens, like there's going to be some kind of demonstration, perhaps in front of the police department, perhaps elsewhere, um, some kind of dialogue about whether or not those type of, of um, I don't know, uh, officers should be deployed? Is that something we can talk about um, as, as a board with you and, and develop a policy around? Certainly, that's within the board's purview to develop a policy on really anything that we do and how we do it. Right. And so the same with, um, I think another concern is with mutual aid agreements and, and you opening to revisiting that and, and talking with us about that. I think I'm required to. Well, yeah, I, yes. <laughs> um, I do. <laughs> so the, the issue is, are, are we going to take the initiative to begin that process? Right, I think I think that's it. I'm 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 working in your favor here, Chief. Uh, just trying to make okay. sure that that we as a board, that you can, and we as a board can commit to working on this together as as part of this overall um, maybe package of reforms. If we can commit to doing that, um, you know, I would support. Um, with apologies to to um, former select board member Rosenthal, um, would support us as a board taking on this responsibility um, after town meeting and working with you on that. Okay, is that what? Can, are you proposing that as as a motion or? Does that need to be a motion? I don't know. Well, no. I, we, would, I, propose, I would propose it as a motion, and I think because I think if we vote on it and uh, we're serious about it, that sends a signal. Okay, I guess the, what, what we're voting on is the Rosenthal Gordon um, um, Amendment. Um, right. So, you know, I, I mean, if you want to go that route. We would have to vote on the amendment, vote it down, and then uh, say that uh, you know this is what we intend to do. Or, or it's, a, or it's a, uh, it's a quote. If Marty and me will accept this, a friendly amendment to say that the subject of uh, their amendment will be uh, will be the subject of a policy development by the select board in uh, cooperation with the chief. 
A, a friendly amendment would definitely, I, I think, be the cleanest. Um, the other option we might have, and I don't even know if this is possible, is to refer it back to the select board. <laughs> we can do that. that. That's very clean. Yeah. But I think we need to articulate the fact that we intend to uh, uh, adopt a policy about this and, uh, you know, working with the chief. I believe the petitioner wanted to say one sentence. <laughs> Probably a long sentence. <laughs> Run on. <laughs> Just kidding, Marty. <laughs> hey, Marty, you gonna say, say anything? That was your opening, Marty. Hey, I'm in the Am I on? Yeah. yeah. Yes. First of all, this is part of the problem with the process. I can't talk to Neil. Uh, and right now I can't do anything. And with semicolon, what Nancy said about a ban is just really respectfully not reading the language. That's it, there's my sentence. But what, what, what's your reaction to the idea of a friendly amendment, Marty? Well, if it's to refer to study it, it does not satisfy one of the reasons for doing this, to show some prompt action in response to the exaggerated stuff that's going on about nationwide things. And secondly, to the uh, events at, at the uh, demonstration, it would be a way to show that the board takes these things seriously without intruding on the police and without anything close to a ban on using existing equipment. I think the board takes it seriously if we, if we commit to working uh, with the chief and, and, and uh, town administrator to put together a policy that addresses this. Well, that's going to be a matter of opinion for town meeting, I suppose. Right now, I can't agree to that because I can't talk to Neil. You know, I okay. think you should take that vote and get it deferred till tomorrow, and I'll talk to Neil. I'm open to almost anything, but this process is much too rushed. So you want to take that vote and urge the moderator to uh, do what he said he would do last night, I'm happy to talk about it. But as of right now, you know, He's at advisory right now. Okay, so let's let, let's take let's take that vote. <laughs> okay, would someone like to uh, propose a motion? Well, you want to do it, or you want me to do it? Um, I think um, Marty doesn't like the way you approached uh, this. So who, who else? <laughs> I'm fine with her doing the motion. It, it was her factual premise about a ban that. Well, I, I'm, I'm saying that we don't need to be, we don't, you know, I don't want us to have assault rifles. Uh, <laughs> I don't think that's the role of the police. And so if that has to be in a band, then it's got to be in a band. But it, if it doesn't have to be, then it doesn't have to be. But, you know, we need to look at these issues and understand what it is. I don't want to eliminate equipment that is purely defensive on people's bodies like bulletproof vests. Yeah. Okay. So, and I okay, don't so understand whether chest protectors or body armor are in, describe bulletproof vests. May I just say, I don't think you're looking at the first paragraph, Nancy. It doesn't ban anything, especially things they already have, they can use. I understand that. Let's focus on a motion. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. So what we're talking about now is um, at this point, I think the, the friendly amendment uh, was not was not accepted uh, at this point where I guess we're talking about referral back to the select board and in the description, there would be a commitment from the select board um, to um, to work with the chief and this could be either through the task force or not. I mean, I, I don't know for this, we can we could probably just work independently of that right now um, to um, uh, to take up the issue of the use of, we can either call it riot, riot or crowd control um, gear. And I, I would like to add um, a review of mutual aid agreements to that as well as the, the, the incident that um, Mr. Rosen, Rosenthal is talking about was also part of a mutual aid agreement. So if we can include both of those as part of it, that'd be great. Yeah. Anyone object to that inclusion? No. So it would be that, uh, um, Refer the select, refer the um, item to the select board with instructions to work with the chief on a policy that addresses the the, um, the subject of the uh, um, um, amendment 
plus uh, mutual aid uh, agreements. Right. Okay. Anyone uh, have any questions or? Well, I, I just want to make one more comment. Marty said, well, I didn't read the first paragraph, but I did read it. And, well, wait a minute. You know, uh, Nancy, wait, uh, let me just make this point. He's saying that, you know, you need a, you need a, a public process to buy the stuff. But if you're dealing with a situation of John Salvi, I mean, <laughs> you don't have time to have a hearing. And, and, you know, so you've got to keep some of the stuff on hand. I mean, you yeah. just do. And yeah. I, I, anyway, I was okay. saying that. Okay, so, so I, don't like uh, that. I, I stated the motion. I think it, uh, it, it reflects what uh, people uh, have suggested. Um, all in favor? Um, Ms. Heller? Aye. Ms. Hamilton? Aye. Mr. Fernandez? Aye. Mr. Van Scoyer? Aye. And Chair votes aye. So is the Melissa on the phone, on, on the line? Yes, I am. Okay, did you get that? Yes, I did. Okay, great. What do we have next? So you have the, um, the other condition of appropriation, um, and I believe town council might be over at the advisory committee um to talk about the um the alston matter yeah so i'm not sure um whether or not the petitioner is here that maybe you'd want that presented to you or um how you want to deal with that i see bonnie bastian is here and i want to just ask her to uh, tell us what she's up to or what what the, the uh, amendment uh or describe her proposal and while, and while Bonnie's um, getting on, I'll just also note that the, the name of the other petitioner is Ashkenazi. Uh, I know um, it can be difficult to pronounce Thank it you. for the first time. No problem at all. Yep. Mm Hi, Bonnie, you've been promoted to a panelist and can unmute and share your video. Hello? Hi there. Hi. Okay, tell us uh, something about your motion and why you are, are uh, proposing it. Um, <clears throat> Oops. We are proposing this motion um, because there are enormous needs in Brookline that need to be filled. Um, okay, wait, wait a minute. Are, are you talking, which motion are you talking about? We're, we're talking now about the uh, Gerald Alston mo related motion. Oh. Well, you don't have the most updated form of that. I am not on that article. I'm not on that amendment. Uh, is Ms. Ashkenazi on? Is, is Ms. Ashkenazi on the, the uh, uh, motion? Yes. She's so, moving that motion and also okay. is so not, not you. Not me. You don't okay. have the most updated names on that. Okay, who's who's the other person? Ann Weaver. Ann Weaver. Is, is Ann Weaver on the no, she doesn't look like she's here. Okay. Uh, which is it? What do you want to do, select board? Well, can we just ask whether uh, the substance of the article has changed? Now that they've changed the petitioners around? Nancy, yeah. I haven't received um, any- Since we don't have the latest version? I haven't received any edits to the motion. I don't know if the name change was just something that was communicated to the uh, moderator, but um, I wasn't aware of that either. Okay. Well, there's not much we can do and, and without an understanding of what it is uh, the motion says. Uh, uh, Ms. Bastian, it, uh, you said that the change is to change uh, one of the proponents. It, uh, do you know uh, what the other <laughs> substantive changes are? Hold on, I just, um, there you go. I'm sorry? Are you able to tell us what the substantive changes are in the amendment in addition to the change of the uh, proponent? Uh, 
I don't believe there are substantive changes to the okay. amendment. So, so the, the amendment we have is what uh, will be before town meeting. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are you in a position to? Um, uh, no. No. Okay. But um, what about asking uh, Patty Correa? Is she on the line? So the problem is that advisory is taking up this at the exact same time right now. So Chief Sullivan and, and Patty Correa are in the advisory committee meeting right now on this item. Okay. Okay, and, and probably uh, Ms. Weaver is there too. <laughs> I would imagine. What I would recommend for the board to do while they're um, waiting for that is potentially take up article 25 because that is something you'll be handling tonight. And I believe Kara is here where she can explain that. I'm going to go back to the advisory committee and see where they are and um, how much more time they think they may need. And I'll, I'll provide an update once I do that. Okay. We didn't vote that already? 25? No, we, we first, didn't. There's some clarity in the vote that needs to be, um, and Kara can explain what's going on. Hi, good evening, everybody. Kara Britton, Economic Development Director. The select board did take up Article 25 early in the town meeting season. Um, as general favorable action as petitioner um, presented it. What we're asking the select board do tonight is to take a vote on where the specific licenses will go. And if you do that, that will be, that is already reflected that vote language in the combined reports for the select board report. So, so the, the uh, problem here is that in the description uh, of uh, the article and our action, the uh, uh, combined report said that we did not specifically identify where the two licenses would go, but in the um, uh, language that uh, the combined report said we voted on, it does say specifically that the license should go to um, Coolidge Corner and uh, Brookline Village. So we're just trying, so the point here is to, um, I guess, ratify or confirm that our position was that the two licenses should be uh, given to Brookline Village and Coolidge Corner. Is that a fair statement, uh, Kara? Yes, and the exact vote language um, starts on page, at the bottom of page 25-3 in the combined reports. It says a unanimous select board voted fav favorable action on the following motion, voted to, and there's language about the petition to the general court, um, to reallocate two remaining liquor licenses from the Washington Square target commercial area to Brookline Village target commercial area and the Coolidge Corner target commercial area. And then there's language that follows that um, puts in the legal insertions to make that happen. Okay, any questions from the board? No, only if um, if Kara after this, if I'm speaking on this tonight, if you can just send me a note with um, with just a reminder of, of uh, I see what's in the combined reports, but I want to make sure I get it right tonight. So if you can just send me a quick note of what I'm what um, what I'm expected to say if this if we if we pass this, that'd be helpful. Great. Thanks. So so the only uh, I, I guess I don't know why we have to vote on this because the problem here is that the uh, description of our action. Um, not the specific action that we took is, is inaccurate. I, mean, I, I guess I don't mind voting just to, to make sure it's, it's absolutely clear, but be that as it may. Okay, uh, everyone understand what we're voting for? We're voting to correct the record. Okay, all in favor? Uh, Ms. Heller? Aye. Ms. Hamilton? Aye. Uh, Mr. Fernandez? Aye. Mr. Van Scoyak? Aye. And Chair votes aye. Okay. Thank you. Check that off. Um, what else do we have before getting back to um, what the Ashkenazi Weaver motion? I don't think there's anything. There's uh, obviously Article 16 Oak Street, which you've already discussed and taken a vote on, and then. Uh, I believe uh, 17 and 18, which are uh, you've already voted on their package of articles to uh, more housekeeping on the housing uh, advisory uh, committee uh, uh, housing fund, I should say. Um, well, so we're waiting on um, um, Melissa to return from the advisory committee. 
Um, do you want to take a break or is there anything else we need to talk about? Okay, why don't we don't take a, a break. okay, why don't we take a 15 minute break and then come back and you know hopefully uh, Melissa will be back from the advisory committee. Okay. And and we'll have a proponent also to talk to. Uh, Bernard, if you don't mind, I just wanted to ask a question and Devin knows the answer. H have any of the other participants um, who are with us asked to speak? Uh, I'm, I'm just saying, since we've got time, would we want to open it up for any more public comment? I don't know. And I, I don't mean well, to- No one's currently asking or has their hand raised. They, okay. okay. I just thought I would check. Okay. Uh, prior to, Marty Rosenthal is now raising his hand, but prior to the meeting, uh, Ryan Black had also inquired about public comment as well. So I don't know if that interest is still yeah. there. Let's, let's um, Marty, uh, let's, let us take a break. And then if you still want to talk at that point, um, you know, we, we, we can talk to you or you can talk to us. And how soon are we coming back? Uh, 50, uh, let's, okay, let's say uh, 545, that's 18 minutes. Great. Okay, thank you. this town and so far to date hundreds of thousands of dollars probably you can correct me if I'm wrong and I'd love to hear the figure um, have been spent litigating cases against Gerald Alston and that really needs to stop especially in this moment of economic crisis in this town okay any questions from the select board is um Mr. I'm sorry, I don't see uh, Patty Correa or anyone from town council here. Um, we did receive a, a, a opinion from uh, legal counsel on this. I take it everyone has seen that. Right, and she's directly involved in the case. So who? you need to keep that in context. When Wait, who's directly involved in the case? Town council. Which town council are you talking about? Jocelyn Murphy. Okay, town council is an office. And Correa, yeah. yes, I'm aware of this, Mr. Yeah. Green. So I'm looking, I'm looking for Patty Correa, and even Jocelyn um, Murphy can advise us and, and give us the legal. Patty is that. still in the advisory committee meeting. She's still in the advisory committee. Yes. Okay, so um, any select board members want to um, ask questions or? Uh, well, so we we got. Um, uh, language from, I guess, external counsel that weighed in and said that uh, t town meeting does not actually have the authority um, right. on this matter. And they're, that's Lewison, yeah. that's the Lewison yeah. firm. They are also directly involved in this case. Right, but they're still good lawyers, so. That's but they're direct, it's a conflict of interest. <laughs> Wait, right? yeah, give us, and give us a second here. Um, yeah, I, I, I to speak. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I did. Um, well, I, I did want to bring up this issue. I, I, I am, I am beyond shocked. I, I mean, and dismayed by the fact that in seeking guidance as to whether or not there are any um, <laughs> this this issue of of conflict between select board and and um, and, and town meeting and whether or not. Um, there are any restrictions on the select board's ability to continue going forth and spending funds to um, to appeal this case 
that we would seek guidance from an, a lawyer in the in the in the in the firm that is that stands to benefit directly if we continue this case is completely beyond me. Uh, and the fact that we actually likely, in all likelihood, I imagine, spent money to get that opinion with that firm is, I find completely unbelievable. I don't know why we would have done that and why we, we could not have. I mean, there are many lawyers and firms out there. If we needed that opinion and wanted to make sure that it was rock solid, why we would get it from a firm um, from a lawyer at a firm that stands to benefit from us continuing this case is it, 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 it's beyond the pale. I can't even imagine. Um, Any other board members? Well, I, I just wanted to um, to add to uh, to to what Raul just said, but with with a different um, uh, reference here. Um, you know, he's focused on the individual counsel and whether they have any connection to this case. And I'm focused on the words of section 3.1.3 .3 of the bylaws of the town of Brookline, which have to me a very clear meaning. And for that purpose, I'm gonna read them. Litigation and claims, the select board, the select board, may institute, prosecute, defend, compromise, and settle claims, actions, suits, or other proceedings brought by, on behalf of, or against the town, provided, however, that they shall act upon advice of counsel when the amount to be paid in any settlement exceeds $1,000. They may employ special counsel in suits by or against the town and whenever they deem it necessary. So I guess I would ask, um, you know, my, my good colleague and the sponsor of this article, what do they think the plain meaning of those words is? I don't see any reference to except that they must get permission from the members of town meeting before they do so in that language. So what do they think the plain meaning of that language is? Put aside, you know, who the council is who gave us this advice. What do they think the plain meaning of the language is? Are you asking me? Yeah. Well, you're the sponsor of the article, yeah. I'm the co-sponsor of the article, yes. Mm -hmm. I'm also not an attorney. So all I can say is this is a moral argument to me that this town has spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on this case and it's unconscious conscionable that you would continue to want to litigate this case using town money feel free to keep litigating if you like but don't use town money to do so get a pro bono lawyer if you like are there other moral um, issues that you feel would warrant um, ignoring town bylaws I'm not answering that question. Well, we're, we're dealing not with moral issues, we're dealing with legal issues. I mean, morality should, should guide us. But, you know, the question right now is, does town meeting have authority to do what it wants to do? I've spoken to a number of lawyers. I'm not a lawyer. And their response has been, absolutely, we control town money. So we have an obligation. We have the power to vote on this and refuse to continue to pay for litigation you have, on you, this you have, the, you have the power to cut the budget for town council, for example, uh, but it's the uh, select board uh, that has the authority to decide you know, what cases are to be brought uh, with that budget. I'm not okay. getting into a legal argument here. You'll hear more tonight from many speakers, some of whom have law degrees, um, who I are law degree. the legal issues. I am not a lawyer. Okay. I am repulsed and offended that the town has spent so much money on this case to, for this poor man who <laughs> was the victim of ongoing racism and discrimination in this town. and nothing was done to make the fire department a safe place for him to go back to work. 
where he wanted to go back to work. He was a firefighter and he loved his job and he is not able to go back to work because it's not a safe place for him. Ms. If Weaver, you have I think legal you need to do question, your homework. Then you need to speak to a lawyer, okay? Thanks. Yeah, I think you need to do some homework in terms of this case. So I see that uh, there are two questions or two hands raised. Uh, I think Mr. Rosenthal was first. Or, or who was first, Devin? Um, I just promoted Marty and then okay. Brian. Mr. Rosenthal, what say you now? Come on, all right. Uh, as you all know, I have uh, one uh, defendant in the Alston case, so um, I can be criticized like anyone else is biased, including, by the way, Mr. Bowman, the Civil Service Commissioner, because civil service is well known for overturning discipline of especially cops. I don't know how often. It... Well, they overturned two discipline cases of ours of, of firefighters. Are you hearing me? Yep. Yeah. I've got one of those little windows about muting. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm signed up to speak against this because I think it does abrogate uh, the, the bylaw that John stated. I think that the brief is very compelling and should be decided. I'm at a loss to understand exactly what will happen if this passes uh, because the briefs have been filed. It reminds me a little of the Michael uh, Flynn, Flynn case where uh, uh, the attorney general has decided not to prosecute something that's been pled guilty. Um, on the legal issue that's been raised, I did look a little bit at the case law that we got last night. I think it's last night. And um, it, it seems to me that, that what is striking is that case law would apply because this would essentially take away the power of the board to uh, litigate a case with the Civil Service Commission. This, the board obviously has a right under civil service not only to hire firefighters, but to fire them, uh, suspend them or whatever. And um, this takes away that power to uh, pursue that. And I, I'm pretty certain this will be ruled illegal. Um, and I don't think town meeting is gonna care because all they're hearing is a lot of uh, sound bites about Mr. Alston. And you know, as well as I do that that commission ruling uh, that he has to be reinstated even though he's unfit for duty and won't comply with any conditions uh, is something that needs to be litigated. It would affect all 351 cities and towns. If, uh, if Brookline somehow dropped out, which I hope will not happen, then Mass Municipal Association ought to be asked to do an amicus brief and come in. So anyway, I think you all understand the case, so I'm going to shut up. Okay. You're welcome. Uh Okay, thank you, uh, Marty. Uh, Mr. Black, Devin, can you um, promote uh, Ryan Black? Can you all hear me okay? Yep. Uh, so um, I was going to ask about the task force, but um, so if there's time, I pr I'd appreciate it if I could towards the end of the meeting, have another chance to ask a question. But uh, we'll give you three minutes. You know, yes. Three so the question I wanna ask about the Alston case is if the select board members who wish to keep litigating it, could they explain why they wish to keep litigating it? Uh, I posted my statement on the select board's uh, uh, webpage. I suggest you read that. Um, should I ask my task force question now or should I wait for later in the meeting? Uh, you got three minutes, you know, got a lot okay. of time left, so yeah. Okay, so um, so I, I feel like a lot of the outcries and heightened emotions right now from concerned members of the public right now about the police, it's about people thinking about the role of the police, how many functions they carry out, the scope of their responsibilities. Essentially, a lot of people thinking about whether or not a situation is well served by having a first responder be A, someone who's armed, and be someone who's trained to consider people as potential threats. So my question is, is this task force, is its purpose to determine excessive expenditures within that current framework, within that current imagining of the police? 
or is the purpose of the task force to try and imagine a new framework for the police, essentially maybe a framework where certain responsibilities are offloaded to mental health professionals, social workers? Like, I was just hoping to get clarification on, like I said, what, what the purpose of the task force is. Well, that, that's going to be, that's going to evolve over time, particularly when uh, Mr. Fernandez uh, uh, submits his charge to the committee. But uh, do you want to add anything, uh, Mr. Fernandez? Sure, I can say in brief that um, that I, the way that I'm envisioning it, we'll write it up and the, the board will, will be able to digest it and public hearing, vote on it, all that good stuff, is that there would be a group that'd be focused on reform. And these are the, the more immediate reforms that um, would would sort of consider our current department as structured and what reform should be made there. Meanwhile, at the exact same time, concurrently, there's going to be a reimagining group that will be focusing on really looking at around the country and around the world different models of public safety and the extent to which they incorporate policing or don't, um, what roles and responsibilities um, may may we may not need uh, armed officers to, to play a role in, those kinds of things. And then uh, along the way, I think it'll become clear um, what recommendations will be made in terms of things like budget reallocation. Um, so that'll happen throughout that process. Okay. Right. okay. Thank any, you. Uh, I, I yield the rest of my time. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, any other uh, questions regarding the uh, Alston um, motion uh, from the select board? So I'm really torn to vote on this. Um, it's either going to be deemed, you know, that town meeting doesn't have the authority or uh, it is. I, I suspect that we'll get a judgment that town meeting, uh, th this goes beyond their scope. Um, but I, I just, it also feels like we, you know, we're we're very close to this issue, and I, I I'm just kind of speechless. I, I don't really know what to do in in this situation. Okay. Any other questions? Um. Well. We're pretty close to the end, really, when you get right down to it. I mean, we have a determination from a commissioner and a superior court judge, and uh, a different determination from a federal court judge. And um, the issue is that, you know, will we continue to pay someone not to come to work? And we have the reason that we fired him was because he was not willing to cooperate with the steps you need to take to be researched, to be reintroduced uh, into the force, including um, working with um, the chief on steps to protect him, uh, but also because, you know, he, he according to the medical professionals who looked at the case thought that you know he had there were certain conditions he had to meet fitness for duty we all require that for all of them we can't uh, we can't abandon that they all they all need to be fit for duty and the precedence of this is that across the Commonwealth um, as, as Marty said it's going to affect the 351 municipalities potentially so, um, you know, I think we have we have to keep going to resolve between the federal and the state. Yeah, let, let me just add that, you know, the reason I was in, in the, um, the select board that terminated Mrs., Mr. Alston, um, and the reason why we terminated him is that, you know, number one, he had a number, or he had uh, done a number of things that made him a serious risk factor for or risk uh, of workplace violence. Um, and uh, there is also indication of uh, illicit drug use. Those two things are very serious. What we tried to do was to work with him. We didn't fire him immediately. We said, let's figure out how we can work with you in order to get you fit for the job. Two psychiatrists evaluated him 
and came to the conclusion that he could be made, he could be, uh, be returned to, jo uh, to the uh, job, uh, provided three conditions were met. Number one, uh, that uh, he worked with us in terms of addressing the workplace conditions that he felt were discriminatory. Um, and, uh, and secondly, uh, that uh, he, uh, um, because of illicit drug use, that he uh, undergo random toxic screens. And uh, thirdly, that uh, he seek treatment from a psychiatrist or a therapist. I mean, those are reasonable things to, to, to require of someone coming back to work under, these, uh, 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 situa under this situation. Um, he refused. He refused to work with us, refused so I, to cooperate. I think we're conflating two different things. Uh, we are wading into the merits of the case, and this is a budget amendment, and I would prefer for us to stay uh, good, on, good, good on point. the topic. We, we were asked uh, about that, so um, anyway. That's all I have. This, 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 this is kind of demonstrating my point that we are so close to this. And I do believe that it will be ruled that this is outside of town meetings jurisdiction. So I'm inclined to abstain just, just because it, it's, it, it's so difficult and it's so difficult for us on the select board to really keep our history out of it on this budget amendment that will be before town meeting. I have a, a question of, um, of um, Attorney Correa or Assistant Town Council Correa, sorry about that, um, if you're with us. Yeah, and, and I, I do not want to get, as, as uh, Select Board Member Hamilton mentioned, I do not want to get into an argument about the merits, of the various merits of this case. We can do that, um, but maybe we should just set up another Zoom that we can do that and invite people to it. Um, I, Based on what we know right now, um, how long do you think it will be? And I know that it's not totally up to us or even um, um, uh, Mr. Olson, but how how long do you think it'll be until this case is resolved? For the Mass Appeals Court case. I'm gonna uh, just speak to what's still to come in it. And then I'm gonna ask Joe to speak to the, a timeline based on his much vaster experience than I have with the Mass Appeals Court. Um, so what's to come still, is the attorney general's office is filing its brief in opposition to the appeal. Um, it's asked for an extension of time through August 10th. So that hasn't been ruled on yet. Presumably it will file its brief on August 10th. And then the town should have, um, I can't remember, it's, it's several, maybe three weeks if I recall. It, it, excuse me, Patty, it, it, uh, they're filing the brief in the federal case? No, we're talking no. about the mass right. appeals court case. I'm talking about right. what's left to come in the mass appeals court case. Okay. So that puts you into, you know, end of August, beginning of September, approximately. We have a pending motion for oral argument. Um, so the, the court, the clerk's office will have to calendar that probably, I would think, a couple of months out. And then you're looking at a written decision from a panel of three judges. Um, so I'm going to let Joe speak to a more, if he can give a better ballpark for that. Hi everyone. So uh, there, there's really no formula and COVID has uh, complicated things in terms of scheduling. Normally once the briefs are completed, the court will schedule, <clears throat> schedule the oral arguments um, in the session that they're sitting, which uh, um, happens within one to three months from the completion of the briefs. Um, because there will be amicus briefs in this case, and because COVID, I'm sure, has created a backlog, uh, I, I, it's hard to say uh, beyond that. Okay, so de definitely not, we're, we're looking at, I think, the couple months from, definitely not until uh, the first snowfall, maybe, um, and possibly even after that. I, I, I'd be hard pressed to say after that. Um, not to say it's not possible, but I think I think you're looking at um, sometime in the in the early fall. So 2020, and then do we have a sense again ballpark of how much we expect to to spend going forward? Uh, essentially, like if if um if if this was possible, uh, how much might this Warren article save us? Is I guess what I'm trying to what I'm trying to figure out. Let well, me jump in. Can not, I jump in here? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Joe. Yeah. So to give you an example, um, all that's left is the reply brief. 
So I, I wrote the reply brief to Mr. Ames's opposition brief as a salaried person. And um, that's a fixed cost, obviously. And, um, and then Joe reviewed it. Um, so there would be, you know, some, likely some form of that, you know, where I, you know, you'd be using your in-house already fixed cost person for as a laboring or, and Joe obviously is, is going to have some input as a, you know, as, as, a, as the outside counsel. Um, so in terms of the brief, so there's one brief left, the reply brief to the AG's office, that's the brief. And then in terms of oral argument, um, Joe will do the oral argument and prepare for that. Um, so, Joe, based on that, what I just said, can you give, can you, are you able to give something of a ballpark? Yeah, it, it, it's one of the more thorough things that you have to do as a lawyer to appear before the appeals court. Um, so I, I'd say it, it, it generally takes a couple of full days of study to make sure that you know the record, um, that you know the case law inside and out, and you know really everything that goes into the case. Uh, legally and factually. So it, it, we've been living the case um, the whole time. And so we know a lot of it, um, but there is a study period that goes into preparing for an appeals court argument that does take some time. I, 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 I usually, usually, I mean, I, uh, I, I'm looking I, for I'm, a ballpark figure. With it, no, like, I, I'm, that it's I'm, a budget amendment. <laughs> I know, I know. So I'm usually that, an hour, essentially it's 200 an hour, that, a couple of days. Yeah, a, a couple of days. Argument, the brief. And it's usually a, a, about a 40, 50 hour process of, of preparing for an appeals court argument and actually arguing the, the case. What Under 10,000, around 10,000 approximately, perhaps, for the brief and the, uh, and the oral argument. Approximately. Okay. Uh, does that make sense, Joe? Did I did I say that? Oh yeah. I mean, if the math is right, I'd say it's usually yeah. about forty to fifty hours. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, so I I joined late um, because I was on the advisory committee's Zoom. Uh, there are some um, town specific civil service issues that um, I could address if you'd like me to that do not um, specifically relate to Mr. Alston, but I'll defer to whatever you guys would like. Who do they relate to? The implications of um, uh, the changes to the civil service law that took place through the Judge Wilkins decision and the subsequent um, uh, civil service decision that came out of it. That and doesn't I, seem to appear to be relevant to this budget amendment. I'm referring to, to you all. Okay. So, Bernard, but, may, may I just enter in a, a minute for a minute? Sure. But I, I wanted to observe Heather's uh, very appropriate uh, sort of boundaries, uh, which, which I'm, I'm totally comfortable with. Let's just talk about the, the budgetary aspect of this. Right. Okay. Uh, I have, um, in a couple of instances, uh, email people who have said how strongly they support this, uh, you know, um, this article to uh, deny the select board any further pursuit of this legal case. And my question to them has been very simple. How much money are you willing to appropriate to put into effect your demand that we not pursue this? Because in effect, you're telling us to settle at whatever price the attorney for Gerald Alston demands. Have you any notion of what that might be? Have you any notion of what your limit is as to how much you would approve the town spending to capitulate to the other side in this case by surrendering our own pursuit of our rights in this case? Is it $1 million? I'm just curious. Is it two? Is it five? Is it 10? If it's five, if you then offer that to the other side and they say, well, um, I was thinking five, but now I'm thinking 10. Will you go to 10? So as a budgetary matter, what this is, uh, is a surrendering of our ability to spend to defend ourselves without the necessary uh, indication as to how much those who want us to surrender that right 
are willing to pay for the consequences of surrendering that right. So I, as a budgetary matter, I don't see how we can adopt this without there being some kind of dollar figure attached to it. And on the same subject of dollar figures, I'd love to hear um, Patty Correa just give us an estimate of how much is it going to cost us to go to the attorney general to appeal to the attorney general that our own town meeting has stepped outside the limits of our own bylaws to try to handcuff us in the pursuit of this case. And who argues for the other side? If counsel, what if they say we can't spend any money to take this to the attorney general to determine if they have stepped outside bylaws? Okay, so I try and they wait into the cost. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there is, there's, there's a cost you haven't even mentioned, which is this is a precedent. It's a statewide precedent. And it creates, um, it hamstrings, it prohibits an employer from inquiring into the fitness of any employee who's raising a discrimination or retaliation claim, it, um, who's claiming unfitness by virtue of that. It creates this exception to the usual rule, right? Um, and we did win at civil service under the under the usual rule at the outset, but then we had these appeals. So, um, so there's the, those uncalculable costs in terms of the precedent. But in terms of the, the cost of the status quo, um, you have uh, Mr. Alston's salary and benefits going forward to a predicted 65 or so. I, uh, and quoted a figure of close to $2 million to the advisory committee on that. Um, in terms of, we also paid about 250,000 plus in, in back pay. Um, so <clears throat> in, in terms of uh, the cost of going to um, well, there's a cost potentially in the federal court case because you're letting a decision stand where the, the attorney, Mr. Ames, is trying to use that in the federal court case, and he's trying to beat back summary judgment. He conceded the facts and he conceded the evidence, but he's using this decision to try to open that case again, and the exposure there beyond salary you know, that we're already paying is emotional distress damages Potential, potential punitive exposure by the individual defendants and um, attorney's fees to Mr. Ames, which is gonna be quite a few hundreds of thousands of dollars given the litigation that's been very heavily litigated. Um, so that those are costs. And then um, you have, you asked about uh, uh, defending the, um, the authority and jurisdiction of the select board. So that is not an attorney general issue. Um, the attorney general's jurisdiction is limited to bylaw review. This is not a bylaw. So the venue would be court. Um, and so, uh, you know, if you wanted to undertake some sort of challenge to, to this. Um, and so those, those, that, that kind of gives you, gives you a sense, perhaps. If I, if I could just follow up on this, um, I just want to make sure that we're not conflating two different things. There's a civil service case, and then there's the federal case. This pertains specifically to the civil service case. Um, it does not, I mean, if, if for some reason this were to pass and it was legal, um, we could simply end the appeal. And we could, oh. and, and we already know what the cost of that will be because that's been laid out in, in the previous decision. So, so that is a knowable number, what the cost of, of doing so will be. Is, is there, am I missing something? Well, so what I'm trying to explain um, is for, well, first of all, there's the salary and benefits, that figure I, I quoted. But what I'm trying to explain is that the strategy and the federal court case depends on protecting the civil court, the civil service case. That is the only evidence Mr. Ames offered, um, essentially, to oppose summary judgment. And so what he, his strategy is to go to the federal circuit and argue that the, um, based on this, this case that we're appealing, and so if it's flipped, he doesn't have the ability to do that anymore. So his strategy has to be to preserve the civil service decision so that he can go to the First Circuit. And we've been notified that the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights intends to file uh, an amicus brief before the First Circuit arguing that very point, whether they were recruited by Mr. Ames or they, they, they're coming in on their own, they intend to argue that point. And so that strategy is completely reliant on protecting the civil service decision. All right. Well, I appreciate you on that. Um, I, you know, I, I think uh, we're all pretty much in our camps on this. Um, you know, I'm, I've, I've, I voted against um, our, our appeal last time this came up, and um, and I'll continue um, to vote for for just about anything. 
that um that gets us that gets us one step closer to ending this. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Even if we win in the courts, I do not consider that a victory. Um, I think that would be a step back for us. And that's my opinion. I know others differ. Um, I think we've all had a chance to share ours. And um, I'll leave it at that. Okay, any further discussion? Uh, let's see, is there anyone else we need to hear from? Mr. Bailey, has he sent uh, his question? Devin? Uh, no, he did not. Okay. Um, do you want me to? Bernard, I do have an update from Mike Salmon. I don't know if um, he already reported this, but they voted no action on the Alst uh, Alston matter. And um, they, it looks like they agreed with you on the referral to the task force for Marty's article. Great, thank you. Do, uh, anything on the um, uh, defunding uh, motion? Um, no, they have not voted on an Indian or Brown yet. Um, I'm not sure if they'll get to it tonight. But they, hopefully they will. <laughs> I, I hope so. <laughs> well, they, they will be responsible for delaying town meeting, not us. I'll say to be fair, there are only five of us and there's like 30 of them. So Yeah, that's true. A bigger yeah. herd of cats. <laughs> Maybe they should start meeting earlier. So I, I just, if you don't mind, I wanted to ask Patty Cray one more question. Uh, sure. and, yeah. And I apologize. I, I'm a person who uh, at a crucial time in my life, I decided not to go to law school. And ever since then, I've thought of myself as a uh, failed lawyer because <laughs> I chose not to go. But um, the law fascinates me. And um, I didn't hear you answer the question, if town meeting seemingly ignores town bylaw to tell the select board it cannot spend money in pursuit of litigation against the town and the select board chooses to challenge town meetings authority to do that um, who who pays for town meeting to argue its point of view and are we essentially paying for representation on both sides of that case so that we can argue against each other? Well, the, in terms of the budget, where the money comes from, I think, yes. I mean, both sides are, would be entitled to the council. That would have to be worked out. And that would be a question for my boss, Chaza okay. Murphy. I'm, a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm just a, a laboring or. Does town council owe any loyalty to one side or the other? Uh, um, in this? So this has come up before, and I, I, to be honest, I don't recall the context. I don't recall how it was addressed. But Jocelyn Murphy did, you know, there was some path. This came up with the ZBA. To, this came up with the ZBA before, where okay. the ZBA needed representation on a case where there was a difference of opinion, and we hired outside counsel uh, to defend the ZBA position. So, um, as as I understand it, then um, uh, our well-meaning. Uh, town meeting members who are proposing this um, do not have much concern as to the eventual legal costs because um, I don't hear them expressing any concern of the town taking action on both sides of yet another legal proceeding um, that is precipitated by them seemingly ignoring a bylaw. That's, that's, that's a comment, not a question. Well, well that, they're hoping that we vote in favor, favorable action on this motion. So maybe you should have that vote now to see if, <laughs> okay. to see what, what their next move would be. Okay, um, I, I move uh, no action on uh, uh, this motion. Um, any uh, other motion? Okay. Uh, well, I on action on it, but but you've made your motion, and so happy to just take a vote. Okay. No. Um, on favor, Ms. Heller. So this is a no action vote. Yes. Aye. Um, Ms. Hamilton. Uh, uh, abstain. Uh, Mr. Fernandez. No. Uh, Mr. Vanskoy. Aye. And chair votes aye. You got that, uh, Melissa? Are you still on? Yes, I do. I have it. Thank you. Okay. So that's uh, that's the end of our anything else on our agenda. I don't think there is. 
I would just note that the advisory committee's motion actually refers the subject matter of the Rosenthal Gordon amendment to the task force and not the select board. You can you can battle that one out on the floor if you'd like. Uh, <laughs> um, okay. We can develop a policy. I mean, and the task force can weigh in on it or vice versa or whatever. I don't know. Well, that, that also doesn't preclude the select board from taking action before right. before the task force, right? Yeah. yeah. So I guess that's fine. Okay, uh, it's the end of the meeting. Uh, or does it? Am I, am I right about that? I, after I just said it, I'm not sure if it's right. Is that right? Is no, that I think that's that right. But, task force yeah, you, you, may, you may look at, uh, the task force may look at it in a broader, um, you know, from broader perspective than the select board. Uh, we're just looking at it in terms of a policy that uh, addresses, you know, um, you know, procurement matters, uh, et cetera. You may, you know, want to look at it broader. For example, you know, does the town need a riot uh, uh, force? Uh, okay. you know, it, maybe it does because, it, it, in the absence of that, if but another John, um, what's the guy's yeah. name, Salvi, Salvi comes yeah. through town, um, we're going to have to rely on. In Norfolk County Sheriff or the state police. And those are folks that uh, we have even less control over. Well, we, just, we, and we, should, we should also, before we go, just separate out tactical gear from from riot police gear, which is which is maybe there's some overlap, but also there's some differences. There. Yeah, yeah. But yeah okay. Right, we can work this out. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. See y'all soon. <laughs> See you soon. All right. Very soon. All right.